Our next speaker is Sri George Baselar. Georgie was born uh, in 1951 in the south of Holland. He later grew up in Sydney, Australia, where he pers pursued his studies in civil engineering. At the age of 18 in 1969, George G. developed a strong interest in yoga, leading him to delve into the practice of transcendental meditation. In 74, he completed the teacher training program under the guidance of Maharshi Mahesh Yogi, the founder of TM. His spiritual journey continued as he embarked on studying Vedic science and Sanskrit at Newcastle University in 1975. In 1980, he traveled to India and, has, and had the opportunity to learn the science of Ayurveda from renowned Ayurvedic experts such as Dr. Brihaspati Trigona and Dr. Bhagwan Das Kashyap. During his time in India, he also had the privilege of meeting notable saints and spiritual figures including Sri Ananda Moima, Devraha Baba, the Shankaracharya of Kanchi Kamakoti Peetham, Sri Chandrasekhar, Chandrash Karendra Swami Swamigal and an unidentified yogi and saint from Gangotri. In 1982, his interest shifted towards Kashmiri Shaiva philosophy after studying Vasugupta's rendition of the Shiva Sutras. He traveled to Kashmir to study under the guidance of Swami Lakshmanju, the last living master of Kashmir's oral tradition. Georgi considered himself fortunate to be accepted as a student by Swamiji and he continued his studies and maintained a close association until Swami Lakshmanju's passing in 1991. During his time with Swamiji, he actively participated in transcribing and preserving the master's teachings. He was given permission by Swamiji in 1988 to transcribe all of his previously recorded lectures, a task that took nearly 20 years to complete. In the years following Swamiji's passing, he returned to Kashmir annually to deepen his understanding of Kashmir Shaivism, including the recitation of Sanskrit hymns and the various mantras associated with Shaiva rituals. His dedication to the study of Ayurveda also led him to complete a diploma course in Marma th uh, therapy in 2014 under the guidance of Dr. Sunil Joshi. Currently residing in Northern California, he, along with his partner, devotes their time to the Universal Shaiva Fellowship in Lakshmanju Academy. Their work involves publishing and disseminating Swami Lakshmanju's teachings with the goal of translating his Kashmiri and Hindi teachings into English to make them accessible to English-speaking students interested in Kashmir Shaivism. His efforts in accordance with Swamiji's wishes have resulted in the publication of various texts, both in English and other languages, including Kashmir Shaivism, The Secret Supreme, Self-Realization in Kashmir Shaivism, the oral teachings of Swami Lakshmanju, Vasudeva, Vasugupta's Shiva Sutras Vimarshini, and the Vigyana Bhairava Tantra, among others. Through his ongoing dedication to preserving and sharing Swami Lakshmanju's teachings, he aims to ensure that the wisdom of Kashmir Shaivism is accessible to sincere students worldwide. His presentation today is on Swami Lakshmanju's contribution to Abhinava Gupta's teachings on Trikadarshana. Welcome, Georgi. The floor is all yours. Thank you so much. Um, okay, I need to just go to view here, speaker. So, hmm, uh, it's not coming up for me as the speaker, but that's okay. I still have you at, on, on the main screen, Dimple. So, are you able to share your screen, uh, Georgie? I can, a... I can, sh I'll share it in a minute. Um, there is, uh, the gallery view. Okay, this will do. I have a gallery view there, so I can see that there are others there. And um, first of all, Dimple, thank you for inviting me. My pleasure. Uh, I feel humbled to be here on the same stage with uh, many of my dear friends and uh, many who are, uh, well, I've, I've been listed here, I can see, as a scholar and author, of which I'm actually neither, or uh, because uh, I'm more of a sadhaka. I've spent my time with Swamiji and for the first eight years working in the garden until he gave me uh, permission to uh, to study his teachings in depth. Uh, and as an author, I, I haven't really written anything except that I've tried my best after 20 years of listening to Swamiji's teachings to to embody his message. And that's why I've, I've actually mentioned today that this my talk is going to be on Swamiji's, Swami Lakshmanju's contribution to Abhinava Gupta. But first, uh, yeah, thank you very much to Dr. Nagaraj Paturi. The, the, little, the introduction and the first talk was very informative. Of course, my dear friend, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Navajivan Rastogi, who I've had many, many years of, uh, we can say, just a relationship with. And it was actually uh, Professor Rastogi, who in 2006, if he remembers, at Swami Lakshman Jew's uh, centenary celebration, 
who took us all together and he said, I have a serious meeting with you and with uh, the most of the trustees of Swami Lakshman Jews Ashram, he said, you people are sitting on a treasure and you must publish Swamiji's work. It must be made available. And that inspiration for me was, was really uh, something. And since that time, uh, we published 11 books extra <laughs> with the inspiration that we got from, uh, again, from Professor Rastogi. We were intending, but he got the whip out and I think he, he stirred the pot. So we did something. Of course, uh, Dr. Ramakant Angaras, who I'm very familiar with, have sat um, in webinars with him and uh, seminars. Uh, and uh, we've, in fact, last year, I think we had one seminar in Delhi. Mark uh, Duskowski, who I saw Mark was online this morning. Uh, I, I was expecting he would give a talk. I know Mark is not feeling that well today. He will be joining us, fortunately, but his talk, we rescheduled it because because as you know, he'll be joining us from UK, so therefore we kind of changed. So he will be speaking. Time difference. That's good. That's good. And I enjoyed uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Madhus uh, Madhusudan's talk with nice illustrations. Swastik, I know, we last year in uh, in a seminar in Varanasi at Banaras Hindu University, and Dr. Chamanlal Razdan, who on the schedule is is following my talk. Uh, a great scholar of Shaivism and has, uh, had met Swamiji many, many years ago. Um, uh, professor, is it Professor Mishra or Sri Mishra? Yeah, uh, Giri Ratna Mishra Ji, yes, Giri Ratna Mishra Ji. I'm not sure whether we've met, but we will meet in his talk, I'm sure. And then uh, uh, Dr. Vishwalingam, uh, the name has come up often, I still haven't met, but Staneshwara. Yes, Saneshwara from uh, San Diego University. So I am really humbled to be on this this uh, uh, talk today. And uh, I've titled it, as I said, I've titled my talk, uh, Swami Lakshmanju's Contribution. So I'm going to give uh, the, the whole audience the flavor of, um, of Swamiji. Uh, and I will share my screen now. Uh, let me see. And... So uh, many of you will be familiar with Swami Lakshman Ju. This was a picture that was taken in the last year of Swamiji's uh, earthly existence. Uh, and uh, it, there's, there's, there are stories always around everything that happened to Swamiji, even this, this particular picture, but we're not going to go into that just now. And I want to start my uh, talk with uh, a mantra that Swamiji emphasized uh, before he left this world, uh, a mantra which he said was capable of not only uplifting individuals, but uplifting all mankind. So I will do that. I will recite the, it's the Agora mantra and the Romanized has been sort of uh, especially adjusted for uh, the Western audience who have a little bit of difficulty um, with the diacritical marks. Om. Agore bio, tagore bio, gore gore taribyascha, sarvata sarva sarvibyo, namaste rudra urupe bia. Agore bio, tagore bio, gore gore taribyascha, Sarvata Sharva Sarvibyo Namaste Rudra Urupebya Agore Bio Tagore Bio Gore Gore Taribyascha Sarvata Sharva Sarvibyo Namaste Rudra Urupebya O Lord Shiva, you alone transform yourself into all forms, into the forms of the powers of Rudra as Agora, the enlightening and uplifting energy, Goratari, the frightening, darkening energy which pushes one down, and Gora, the energy which keeps one fixed in either rising or falling. These forms embodied in Rudra Shiva are helpful to aspirants while they are aware and frightful for the ones who are ignorant, pushing them down and down. And this mantra, how, it, how this mantra evolved 
into uh, Swamiji's world, we can say, and, and why he gave it to so many of his devotees, and he emphasized to recite this mantra daily, was that in 1989, Swamiji had a very, very deep, a profound experience where he went into a state uh, which he later described as, as his union with the state of Paravairava, which means the state with Paramashiva, Supreme Shiva. And during that time, Swamiji actually had the darshan, the direct darshan of uh, Swachanda Bhairava. And we know that Swachanda Bhairava, also known as Agoranatha, the, the, the lord of this mantra, Swachandanatha um, figures in Kashmir Shaivism uh, as the form, the first embodied form of Lord Shiva in the period of Satyuga. It's well known in the chronology of this uh, Shaiva Sampradaya that in Kali Yuga, Lord Shiva appeared as Srikantanata and he appeared on Mount Kailash, although this is a figurative say of Mount Kailash, uh, because Lord Shiva is everywhere, but he he appeared to uh, Durvasa Rishi, and he, he bequeathed with, to Durvasa Rishi that he would be the custodian of Shaivism for the totality of Kali Yuga, and that was Shaivism in its three forms: in the uh, monistic, uh, mono dualistic, and dualistic Shaivism. And this was indicated in the last pages or the last part of Sri Somananda in his book, Shiva Drishti. So this Agora Mantra, um, Swamiji said, was so universal that it really can't lend itself to just one translation, especially a literal translation. And why he felt it was so important was that uh, Abhinavagupta refers to these three energies, the energy of Agora, Gora and Goratari, as so closely related to the state of Anuttara. In fact, in Tantraloka 3, in the third Anika of Tantraloka, when he starts the whole section on Matrika Chakra, which runs for over a hundred verses, it starts from verse 66. And in verse 67, uh, Abhinavagupta makes uh, a, a vague reference to the fact that the supreme energies are Jeshta, Raudri, Vama, and Amba. Now, Swamiji, in his uh, translation of that verse, uh, drew out from uh, Jairatha's commentary and said, yes, these, these energies are actually the subtle names of the Agora, Gora, and Gora uh, Tari energies. Agora, of course, being Jeshta, which lifts you up. Gora being Raudri, who keeps you stuck and fixed. And Vama, who pushes you into the world. Now, in Shaivism, uh, these three energies have their role. In fact, without these three energies, Shiva and Shakti would never have been able to come down into the world and manifest themselves in the hearts of all living beings, which includes everybody here today. So somebody mentioned there before, how, why uh, has there been, is there so much, uh, you know, differentiation? And the differentiation is only there when we're unaware of our true nature. So in order to play in the world, both Shiva and Shakti or Shiva through his Shakti, had to step down through, and it's already been mentioned today by other speakers, through the five pure tattvas, through Maya, through the Kanchukas, and through the 25 tattvas, which make up the tattvas of Sankhya philosophy. So uh, since this is about Abhinavagupta today, I wanted to give the audience a taste of what it was like to sit at the feet of Swami Lakshman Jew. And I want to play this important sloka that everybody would be familiar with who's studied any aspect of Kashmir Shaivism, the first introductory sloka of uh, Tantra Loka, which Abhinavagupta again used as his Mangala sloka for his uh, brief version, Tantra Sara. It's also the first verse of his Paratushika Vibharana. 
So it's very brief, but I wanted to play Swamiji's voice and Swamiji's explanation of this verse. Let me see here. Oops. Okay. Dimal Kalashaya Binav Srishti Maha Janani Barita Tanush Panch Mukh Gupta Ruchir Janaka Tat Ubai Yamala Sufrit Bhavu Visargamayam Hridayam Anuttara Mritukulam Mam Samspurtati My essence of being, which is filled with supreme nectar of God consciousness and which has come forth by the union of my mother and father, let that essence of my being vibrate in this whole universe. My mother, who was named as Vimala, because she was residing in the purity of God consciousness, and her only festival was my birth in her life. My father, who was full-bodied, because he had no desires at all for sensual pleasures. And his name was Panchamukhu Guft. Panchamukhu Guft means Narasimhagupta. His name was Narasimhagupta. And he was my father. And by these two souls has outcome the existence of Abhinava. And let the heart and the essence of his being vibrate in this whole universe. So, in that verse, um, I mean, it's so pregnant with meaning. Uh, of course, Abhinava Gupta gave a much more elaborate um, explanation of that in his Paratrashika Vivarana. He, he talked about how this, whole, this verse embodied both Shiva and Shakti and his own parents, but how the whole word Abhinava, uh, which means ever new, ever fresh, and he said, creation and destruction are the two main aspects of this. In between, of course, we have maintenance. He said, but we only get destroyed in this world. We only, we only finish one cycle of samsara to be renewed again and born again. It's, it's just the cycle of, of time and the cycle of uh, it, with, uh, with Abhinava Gupta. Just, it's very hard for me to uh, explain, you know, how great Abhinava Gupta is because uh, I'm just such a small soul in this universe and everybody else has done their best. Swamiji, on the other hand, throughout his life, very rarely mentioned his personal experiences, but he did have darshan of Abhinava Gupta throughout this, this particular lifetime, he said, as Swami Lakshman Jew. And the last experience that he had of Abhinava Gupta um, appearing to him was in, I know, it, uh, precisely it was 1985. And we used to have lectures of Swamiji every uh, Tuesday and Thursday with John Hughes, Denise, and they would record these lectures. And we, kept, we would come to the ashram on Tuesday morning uh, an hour before the lecture just to see how Swamiji was and, and if we were getting a lecture that day. And on one particular day, we came there and it was Denise Hughes and myself and, and Swamiji was just shining. Um, he used to shine sometimes, but on this particular day, he was shining brilliantly and we could only sit in silence at his feet for about 15 minutes. And then he said, there won't be any lecture today. And he, and he, he paused, there was another silence for quite some time. He said, Abhinava Gupta appeared to me in last evening and he gave me some very special um, knowledge and some very special treasure to share 
And that's all he said. And then on the Thursday, uh, when, uh, when we had the lecture, we, did, we were actually doing Paratrashika Vibarna at that time. Swamiji said, well, today I'm going to share something with you. It's not Paratrashika, but uh, it is uh, 16 shlokas. And Professor um, Rastogi, who mentioned that he's working on the, the Ishwara Prachabhigya Viviti Bhimarshini, and he mentioned many parts of that in his talk, which was just so wonderful for me, because what Swamiji shared with us was the first 16, uh, we can say Mangala shlokas of the 16 sections. We know there's only four chapters, but they're broken up into 16 different chapters. And uh, the reason that Swamiji later said that this was so important is because that these Mangala shlokas, which represent the, the, the swaras, the vowels, the Amrita Bijas of the Sanskrit alphabet, are the essence of Pratyabhigna. And they have to be because they're all contained within Shiva, uh, within you know, the state of Shiva Tattva. So I, I'm going to share again with the audience here the, um, the actual recording that Swamiji made on that day in 1985, where he introduces and he recites each of these verses. And I will, um, I'll share my screen again for that because I, uh, I have the actual verse when he sings the verses, I have them there in, uh, in Devanagari. So uh, let me share my screen again. Oh, actually, for, no, what I will do first, I'll play this very short clip. This is a this is a very um, unique thing where somebody recorded just a, a little six minute section of an interview with Swamiji talking about Abhinava Gupta. The lady is Mother Alice who used to visit Swamiji. They're in the Shikara and they're on uh, on the lake. Can everybody see that? Can somebody give me confirmation if you can? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay, it may be a little rough because it's a it's that kind of recording, but uh, we'll play it and see. What about, you know, the great teacher Abhinava Gupta that you study of so much? What, where did he come from? He was such a great master of the Shaivite philosophy. He lived up here at Gopitir. Yes, near Gopitir. Yes. And Gopitir is your master's place. Yes. And he lived there. And Where did was... he come from? From Kashmir? Was he a Kashmiri? Yes, he was Kashmiri. He was a Kashmiri. Kashmiri go Abhinava Gupta is the present. I see. Kashmiri guy. I see. Belonging to Kashmir and he was genius. He was not married, you see. Yes. He, he had no children. He has said in, in his book, in one of his books, Dharat Maja Prabhupada Band Katha Manavta. Avina Gupta is who, who has not married. But he had <coughs> girlfriends to attend him. Mm. Because you see, motherly assistants is not done by men. So he didn't hate women? No. Yes. He liked women, but he was not given to sex. But super sexual joy, yes. He was in an ecstasy. When I see the pictures and of him, he, had, he looked. He had occurred that all those great, great eight yogic powers also all, in his lifetime. All the eight all powers. The eight powers. And he was famous throughout the land, was he not? Oh, yes. And then when did he leave his body, Swamiji? When did, did he die uh, young or...? No, no, no. He, he died at the age of 96 years. 96 yes, years yes, old. Yes. And he was well and hearty all he that very time? Very hearty, yes. No disease, nothing. Because I... he had experience of yoga and he could induce uh, yogic medicines in his body. And, and it's his books that you are translating? He never, he never tried medicines. He never touched them? In his life, no. I see. And in yoga. Yoga. Just was. yoga alone? Yes. And then he wrote these books yes. on the, the Shaivite philosophy, which not, you... No, not only Shaivite philosophy, he wrote <coughs> books on music, music, books on art, ah. books on drama, he books was on rhetoric. Really books on creative. He was greatest. He was genius. Genius and creativity. Yes. And known throughout the land yes. because of that. And now the books that you were trying to translate uh, with uh, your, some of your American students, uh, which ones are they? Tantraloka is one. Tantraloka? Tantraloka, Tantraloka he, 
and he wrote he didn't write he he spoke he explained and uh, his disciples were noting down they took us like a yes. scribe yes a scribe. like a scribe yes. and any and other book in, that you were 37 were? days 37 days 37000 shlokas 37000 shlokas and he was just going on that's just like writing uh, was, the encyclopedia britannica yeah, 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 in a week yeah, yeah. isn't it my and all his disciples were noting down writing as fast yeah. as they could then sometimes i've heard that like the i think in those days there was there was short handles I see. Because they couldn't write so much. I see. So a type of shorthand uh, yes. was there. But then when he died, who who took his place then, Swamiji, in the greatness of this Shrivaita? Kemraji. 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 Kemraji was his chief disciple. And he lived a long time here in Kashmir? Yes. But he didn't live so long. I see. And then came your teachers? Many gen generations. Many generations. Many gener came. generations after that, one uh, one master came. His name was Gopal Raj. Another master came. His after two generations after him, his name was Laska Raj. And how Another many? Another ma master came. His name was uh, Mukund Raj. Was the was the Shaivite philosophy? already fully established when Abhinava Gupta took his seat? Yes. It was well known then? Well known. And what, was, what year did he live? What, what year, year did Abhinava Gupta In the 9th and 10th uh, century AD. And Shaivism was well known then, yes, by yes. then. Yes. Do you have any idea how old Shaivism is? You can't, you can't say definitely. It is very ancient uh, uh, thought. It is not religion, I told you. That yes, it's not religion. religion. It is very ancient thought. It is explained by Lord Shiva himself. I see. So it is as ancient as you find Vedas. So in the Vedas, the even Apavrishi. in... Apavrishi. In the... It is called Apavrishi. Not conducted, conducted with, uh, by human being. So it was given by the gods to by the, the gods, earth. Yes. So it would have come out of as old as the mythology of the world yes. then. And still being very clearly interpreted here. Yes. And and messenger, the messenger and the interpreter was chief, chiefly Abhinavgupta. Abhinavgupta has laid down it in clear words. In the great, so the greatest yes. uh, authority that has been shown in the world was was Abhinavgupta. Abhinavgupta yes. uh, Swamiji, uh, go and now hundreds of years later, you are the last. So that, that, that is the part of the clip about um, Abhinava Gupta. And already um, Dr. Uh, Madhusudan had mentioned about Abhinava Gupta and he, he gave that illustration. This is a paper that was written by Swami Lakshmanju. And uh, we often talk about the greatness of Abhinava Gupta, but um, what is the essence of his experience? And Swamiji was always emphasizing to us that he had achieved a state which was um, in the eighth anika, uh, sorry, in the thirteenth anika of Tantra Loka, the whole of um, a, a very large portion of that is all about um, Anugraha and, and, and the grace, the 27 different levels of grace. And Swamiji said it was clearly understood by even those around him at that time that Abhinava Gupta had achieved the state of what's called Tivra Madhya Shaktipata. It's the second highest level of grace. The highest level usually appears when a, an, an, a guru or a saint or a, uh, an aspirant leaves the body. But he, he experienced the second state, Tivra Madhya Shaktipata. Tivra intense, medium uh, grace. And it's explained there that anyone, any yogi who experiences this, they experience the state of Rudra Shakti Samavesha. So the Rudra Shaktis embrace them. And there are, in the Malani Vijaya Shastra, it, it talks about that there are six signs. And these are the signs also that, that Dr. Madhusudan had mentioned. The six signs, unswerving devotional attachment to Shiva, the full attainment of Mantra Siddhi, 
attainment of controlling power over all the five elements which uh, extend themselves into the 36 elements, the capacity to accomplish any desired end, mastery over the whole science of rhetoric and poetics, and the sudden dawning of knowledge of all the Shastras. And as Swamiji said, and this, this is a paper written by Swamiji many, many years ago, these six great spiritual signs were observed by discerning people in Abhinavagupta. And in his time, everybody looked upon him as Shiva incarnate. So, Professor Nabdiyan Rastogi, he has mentioned about these, uh, doing his uh, work on the the Paratrishi, sorry, the Ishra Pachabhigna Viviti Vimarshini, which is called the Brihat, the, the larger uh, tra uh, commentary that Abhinavagupta did. And these are these are the Mangala Shlokas of the different Amrita Rudras. I, I, I pulled these out originally many, many years ago just to see uh, them. I guess there's only one page on that. But uh, what I'd like to do is these are these are the slokas that were given to Swamiji directly by Abhinavagupta in 1985. So what we're talking about here is that, that Abhinavagupta is still very much alive in terms of his uh, maintaining and, and also uh, his contribution to this teaching. And uh, so I, I will play what Swamiji, I'll play Swamiji's recitation of these with a little bit of an introduction also. Scan back here, I'm afraid. Sorry. Uh, here we go. Now there are some more shlokas, very important to be recited along with these shlokas. Those shlokas are just 60 on 16 vowels. And they are composed by our Abhinavata in that Pratibhikya. Shall I recite those also? There is no harm if, if you just memorize it afterwards. These 16 letters. Each letter has got one shloka. This letter is mantra akshara for those rudras. And those rudras are 16 in number. Those are called Bij Samad Bhuta Rudra. Amrita, Amrita Purna, Amrita Abha, Amrita Drava, Amrita Auga, Amrita Ormi, Amrita Sandana, Amrita Anga, Amrita Vapu, Amrita Udgara, Amrita Asya, Amrita Tanu, Amrita Sechara, Amrita Murti, Amrita Esha, Sarva Amrita Dara. These are 16. And for these 16, he has composed these 16 shlokas in Vrat Pratirikya, in, in his commentary. First, first is the turn of Amrita. Shall I recite it? Amrita Anantam Anuhutaram Ughora Shuhoda Shikha Shakti Chakra Gatam On Manasa Padanyarudi Prathamo Podgatakam Vandi Now Shroka for Amrita Purna, second Rudra. Anandam Amrita Purnam Samanase Parapadhe Param Saityam Gatita Nuttar Dridatama Nirudhi Bhajam Shivam Vande Third Rudra is Amrita Abba Icha Shakti Sunyar Param Amrita Abham Ananta Bhavan Janan Patum Vande sa shakti lahari bhalita bhairav parahanandam. Now fourth is Amrita Drava. Yishwaram asheshitap prashmanam Amrita Dravam sada vande apratigati secha vikas vishrantam Amrita karamahulim. Now fifth is Amrita Uga. Yadhanuttar Sambhodat Ananda Vikasare Chaya Purnam Yishwaram Unmishad 
Amritaugusundaram Tatsu Vidam Now sixth is Amritormi. Aham Anand Ganecha Gadite Sharatun Mishat Samastormi Yitullas Tarangitam Amritormim Aham Chidaranavam Vandi now seventh is Amrita Sandana. Saprasara Prankit Vilasat Urmis Sankhibit Chit Rasapuram Amrita Sandana Saram Bhairava Samvit Maharnavam Vande Eighth is Amritanga. Purvam Yadanuttaram Amrita Bhumi Masadya Saptamim Kalanam Vishramiti Tat Pranamahamyam Amrita Angadam Parahanandi Now ninth is Amrita Vapu Shivam Amrita Vapu Sham Amrita Kala Chatushtai Triti Ibag Jusham Pranamahami Basayantam Kramarahite Pikramamane Kam Tenth is Amritodgara Sanjeevan Turi Kala Kalit Vibodam Samast Bhavanam Dushan Vishishir Nahanam Amritodgaram Shivam Vande Alemant is Amritasya. Ekamanuttar Rupat Prabhati Trika Shakti Purita Nandam Amritasya Maisi Jagata Pramahana Bhutam Shivam Vande Twelfth is Amritanu. Aike Paramartha Kalaya Trishakti Yuga Gadita Vaishuru Pyamaham Amrita Tanum Atanu Bhoda Prasara Mahakaranam Sumrami Haram Thirteen is Amrita Sejana Ota Protam Sakalam Vidha Sarasena Shumayi Kurute Yonuttar Dham Nudayan Sayam Amrita Nishejanam Tamasminatam Fourteen is Amrita Murti Aushadam Adivyadishu Pashatreshatanam Trishulakaram Vandeham Amrita Murtim Purnutraka Shakti Paramartham Fifteen is Amritesha Bindavam Amrita Rasamayam Vandeyo Nuttare Nijedamni Purni bhava yiti tamam, amritesham tam namasyami. Question 16 is Sarva Amrita Dara. Prasadam anuttar rupat, ananda dikramen vishwamada, Sarva Amrita Dara mantar, bahishti visrajantam abhivande. Afterwards, when you Memorize it, I will translate it afterwards. Now, the, the, the only unfortunate side of that was that uh, that tape was made at a time when there was a lot of transition happening in the ashram. We never did get a translation. But in 2016, I was fortunate to go to Varanasi and sit with Mark, and uh, he suggested he suggested that uh oh, let me just go here yeah mark suggested that there's a, a great scholar here who can uh help you to translate these and i went there and i found this person was a very recognized scholar but his rendition was dry i i didn't get any rasa from that so i went back to mark's place and i said come on mark, mark you can do it and mark gave such a wonderful full of rasa uh, explanation of these slokas 
And uh, I, because I didn't know Mark that well up to that time, we'd met once in 2006 in Delhi for Swamiji's centenary celebration. And what surprised me, you know, I, I'm not around scholars except for the time that I spent with Swamiji, was Mark translated all of these verses and not once, or only once did he refer to a dictionary <laughs> to see what that was. And that shows fluency, not, not just in Sanskrit, but in understanding Abhinava Gupta's subtle uh, nuances with the, with the language and with Kashmir Shaivism. And I was, I was very honored to do that with Mark. Um, and uh, Can I say something just a minute? Yes, please. Um, the, the other 34 Rudras that cover the consonants um, are, worship, are uh, a verse to each one of those is dedicated at the beginning of uh, each chapter of Jayarata's commentary on the Tantra Loka. Yes. So there are 16 that were translated, that were verses that were made by Abhinav Gupta at the beginning of his uh, commentary on 16 chapters of the Vimarshini. And uh, 34 of the remaining ones are in the commentaries at the beginning of the chapters of the commentaries of 34 chapters of the Tantra Loka by Jayarata. And uh, I, I, uh, I translated all of them, and you'll find that somewhere in an appendix to one of the volumes. Just by the way, um, I hadn't noticed that at first, and relatively recently I, I, I noticed. Uh, so actually there are the full set of 50 Rudras that are listed in the Mali Vijayotara, um, each one with its own verse. No, the, 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 um, those verses are something really, really special. And Swamiji did say, he says, you know, re recite these verses. Uh, they, they're, uh, they will have some effect. And I didn't realize at the time until I, I delved into where they came from, because he, he, he told us that in that small thing that they were from the, the Brihat Vimarshini, the, the, the long commentary on Ishwa Prachabhigna. And subsequently, Swamiji gave a few clues as to why they were so important. One of the main clues is, uh, again, I'll share my screen, is it in the, in the Vigyana Bhairava Tantra, where Bhairavi asked Bhairava, uh, you know, uh, please give us the essence of what is the, the way to enter into the state of Bhairava. And the first six or seven uh, dharanas are all to do with breath. They're all to do with awareness of the breath in the different states of upayas. And uh, in the in verse 30, which is the seventh dharana, um, again, uh, Swamiji points out that this dharana is, uh, is the essence of your own nature because he, he says that by doing this seventh dharana, you uh, can rise directly from Anupaya to Shambhavapaya in one in one flight. And that the actual practice, again, I'll share my screen because it's, it's good to illustrate this. The actual practice is, uh, well, first of all, I guess, if we look at the Tattva's chart, um, where we have, you know, the, the states of Anuttara, this is this is from the um, the appendix of Tantra Loka 3, which was published a few years back, it's, it's, it's uh, appendix 14, letters of Matrika uh, Chakra. And uh, in, in, the, in the vowels themselves, you can see uh, how much is packed into just these 16 vowels. Anuttara, Ananda, Icha, Ishana, Unmesha, Unita. Then, of course, there's the Shantavaranas, which are all Anashruta Shiva. And then you have the, uh, the four states of Kriya Shakti, Trikona, Shakona, Onkara, Trishula, and of course, Anuswara, Ang, Shiva, Bindu, and Visarga, Shiva and Shakti, Bindu. So in that seventh, uh, seventh dharana of uh, the Vigana Bhairava, the yogi, according to Bhairava, he tells Bhairavi, if you just contemplate on the 12 letters, leaving out these uh, Shantavaranas, then you will rise through 
uh, Shishumna Nadi, and it's to be contemplated and imagined. You imagine the letters, you imagine the those, and if you if you go just on where the letters and placing them in those places, uh, it says that pretty soon you'll go into the the spunder of those letters, and eventually that will that spunder will become uh, uh, Chit It'll become the fire of consciousness. And uh, when we when we were doing this uh, thing, we did this with a group here when we went through the different uh, dharanas. This was that. This was the placement of those letters: uh, uh, e, e, u, u, a, i, o, al, ang, and aha, as explained in that uh, Vigana Bhairava Dharana Seven Sloka, thirty. And so, in in in, it's very easy to uh, just join this. That, that if if these are the the subtle swaras which are the basis of as mark pointed out these are the basis all, all the vyanjanas all all the consonants come out of these vowels as explained very clearly by abhinava gupta in the third anika of tantra loka but here you're going back to the essence of uh, of everything else and of course all the other consonants make up the different external parts of the body uh, if you go to matrika matrika nyasa you find that you know the different limbs of the body constitute the pentad of letters, etc. So um, these these practices or this particular practice is uh, embodied in those sixteen uh, slokas that Swamiji recited, which he got directly from Abhinava Gupta, and. Um, how did Swamiji know Abhinava Gupta so intimately? Again, he did let on a few times, especially in 1985, that he had darshan of Abhinava Gupta on uh, numerous occasions throughout his life. In fact, when, when Swamiji first commissioned a painting of Abhinava Gupta, the painter came back and he had Abhinava Gupta with a long and pointed beard. And Swamiji said, no, 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 that he doesn't have a long pointed beard. He has a neatly cropped beard. So um, in, in that, uh, I'm, I'm going sort of forward here. Yes, this is, this is the depiction that he said, he doesn't have that long pointed beard. So how would Swamiji know that if he hadn't um, seen, because it's not, that's not mentioned anywhere. And he mentioned that, you know, he had two duties. Um, he was, he had uh, that, uh, all of those qualities of uh, the the of Rudra Shakti Samavesha, and that's why uh, he he was a self-made master. Swamiji said that, and then the question was put: Why did Abhinava Gupta go to other masters then? And he said he went only for confirmation, confirmation of his experience. And of course, everybody who studied Tantra Loka knows that he held Shambhunatha in the highest esteem. So um, we can go back a little bit here. Uh, this this is uh, from the Bhairava Stotra, which is the 10 verses of the Bhairava Stotra. This is the second verse. And in a paper that Swamiji wrote, which was in Hindi, he indicated that this, uh, this verse was Abhinava Gupta's declaration that he had achieved the highest state of, of existence in the physical body. You know, Tran Mayam Etad Asheshan Vidanim, Bhati Mamatwad Anugraha Shaktiya, Twamcha Mahesha Sadaiva Mamatma, Swatma Mayam Mama Tena Samastam. <clears throat> and the Kashmiris, of course, have a, a beautiful way of reciting these verses, not in uh, in, in, a, in a way that is filled with quite a bit of rasa. You know, so um, those of you that have ever been to the ashram in Kashmir or been to any of Swamiji's havens would know this. So it, it, the, the translation that we got from this verse was, by the energy of your grace, this is Abhinava Gupta speaking, it has been revealed to me that this vibrating universe is your own existence. Thus, O Lord Shiva, this realization has come to me that you are my own soul, and as such, this universe is my own expression and existence. And uh, I 
I wanted to sort of finish off here because I'm staying within my time limit. Um, uh, Professor Angiras uh, made mention of this verse, which is, uh, as you can see there, Tatacha, um, Ayava, and it's from Shiva Shakti Stotra. Shiva Shakti Stotra here. There were only two verses uh, that were uh, kept of this Stotra, and this one in particular, which appears in in the 19th verse of um, the 15th chapter of Abhinavagupta's commentary on the Bhagavad Gita. And, you know, Tavachika Chanana Stuti Rambike. Dr. Angiras made mention to this, but it was in Hindi. And um, every time I hear him talk, I realize how much I need to learn Hindi. But um, Swamiji really favored this verse because he said it really sums up the idea of uh, this whole idea of um, Amba and uh, how this Shabda Rashi, this great mass of sounds has flown into the world and that in fact for the enlightened yogi all words are mantra, all words are filled with divinity not just mantras and slokas and everything. So I've picked for finishing off here um, Swamiji's translation of this verse from his English translation uh, of the uh, Bhagavad Gita, Abhinavagupta's Bhagavad Gita. So I'll just play this short clip. <laughs> Sakal shab mai kil de danu Nikhal muhur di shumye bhavadhan nayo Manasi jahazu vahish prasarasu jab it is Devi Stotra by Abhinav Gupta. Tavujya ka janana tudirambike O Mother, O Mother, Mother, Tavujya ka janana tudirambike By going, by Sitting in in meditation room aloof, leaving all activities aside and thinking of you Om Paravak Deve Nama, Om Paravak Deve Nama, Om Paravak Deve Nama, Parabairavai Nama, Parabairavai Vai Nama, like this. And reciting my name, that is not your, your Tuti. Even Augusta says, that is actually not your Tuti. One who sings glory in, in the secluded corner of Puja room, with all doors shut. Why? Why it is not that? Sakal shabd mai kilde tanum. O mother, O great mother, Swadandra Shakti. This is jug, this is paneer, this is lime juice, this is ghee, this is paratha. Sakal shabd mai. This is also your city. When I perceive this, this is also your suti. Sakal shabd, you have, you have not, you are not excluded there. Sakal shabd mai kilte tanu. This is this is existing in the body of your in in your universal body, O oh mother.
so nikhil mohurd jume bavadhan nayo and murti you have you have got four arms 18 heads like this this is not your body nikhil mohurd jume bavadhan nayo when i see viresh i see mother is mother i see mother when i see jonathan i see mother when i see george i see mother when i see that that shikas that that bad i see mother nikhil mohur dishu me bhavatan nayo i am united in the o oh mother manasi ja subahi prasara sujam and while thinking of thoughts in those thoughts also you are existing in the, for me yadi vichin dishe shamidah shive going in the depth uh, so myself after going in the depth of this this secret of the jagati jatam yatn vashah kidam i find that in this universe it has it has happened automatically what tutij pahar chanchin tanwar jita nakaluka janakal karha pimim each and every moment i am adoring you thinking of you oh divine mother i have i have no no one in view only you you are existing in me in each and every murti in each and every step in each and every movement of this world so this way you should think this state of parabhadava not only in individual shikas way john ji jit swami ji really say shikas way yes he said shikas <laughs> you should have to translate that for others who don't know what shikas means it's a kashmiri term i i think it means just downtrodden and and uh full of rubbish basically this, we can use it in many ways but i think here he meant disgusting because he says that he sees the divine mother in uh, you know uh, jonathan and nikhil and he also sees it in a shikas sure type so it's like if somebody is disgusting also in her also in him also i see the divine mother i think that's what he meant yes yes it's, it 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 lends itself to a very wide audience that word um and uh is i don't think i can add i i i've stayed on track with time uh used 45 minutes there and uh just uh i mean this whole idea of of the letters of the alphabet and this verse and everything going back to matrika chakra and malini um you know they they form the essence of uh of of abhinava gupta's teaching you know and uh that's uh Abhinava Gupta, you know, is we can say we can't say he's becoming alive because he certainly is alive. And uh, even one person said to me, "You can't celebrate his Jayanti because that means he's gone. You have to celebrate his birthday." <laughs> you know, that uh, <laughs> I thought that was very clever, and uh, that's what we're here today to celebrate uh, the life of uh, the most amazing Shaiva scholar. you know in in the uh, sampradaya of uh, of kashmir shaivism and i look forward to hearing the uh, the rest of the speakers uh, what i've heard so far is always informative so um again thank you for inviting me today and uh, let us see what happens at the end here uh, for uh, for question time that might come up thank you so much georgie navraj garu would you like to say something 
no no actually throughout uh, it was such a enjoyable uh, presentation uh, with the videos and audios and uh, experience actually i had never earlier heard a kashmiri way of recitation uh, of uh, sanskrit verses like this this is my first uh, experience of actually hearing how a kashmiri recitation actually looks like Uh, yes. wonderful actually and uh, i always wanted to have a look at uh, swami ji uh, and today we had that good fortune also that is my dhanya uh, ho i should say yeah, we had a darshan and thank you very much for giving us that opportunity of having darshan of swami ji yeah this is thank you I, oh. I recently, I re- I'll just finish. I recently was invited to a, a conference uh, in Jammu. The first, the first one on uh, on Kashmir Shaivism at Jammu University, in fact. And I found that uh, you know, no matter how much I can say and try to uh, uh, bring out Swamiji's teaching, just a, a short clip of Swamiji speaking is more than I could say in a hundred years, probably. <laughs> because that's coming directly from uh, from someone who is connected to the sampradaya and uh, you know although it went underground for 500 years swamiji started to tell that lady who was about the the, the masters and then uh, unfortunately she cut him off he would have given a few more names there i'm sure but that's uh, that's gone now and um, so i i always find in any of these presentations if i can allow people to have even just darshan of swamiji without understanding it it that matters uh, more than anything as far as uh, from my side so i was happy to do that i just wanted to thank you personally georgie uh, there are youtube videos of swamiji and i keep visiting those from time to time i have had the fortune of uh, having darshan of swamiji when i was a little a girl in school so he he had come to our school we used to have annual havan and all so i do remember him and it's it's very strange that i mean i read it when i was very young it but his voice like when i hear it it seems very familiar like as if i'm hearing him as he was speaking in my school so thank you so much there's a question by shri niranjan ji he uh, they ask is there any correlation uh, between matrika chakra malini and shiva maheshwar sutra would any of the uh, uh, you know scholars here want to answer this well, i would just say one thing really quickly that in in tantra loka 3 and mark will be able to elaborate on this also in tantra loka 3 um abhinava gupta points out that the first three letters r e u which is ayun relik is the first of the of uh, the shiva sutras or maheshwara sutras um the essence of the whole of of uh universal uh play that they come out of those first three letters of course the long letters are uh, absorbed into those three letters So yeah there is a there is a, a connection there but um uh, I'm not familiar with uh, Panini's Vyakaran I I I I won't try to even pretend that I know that but I know these first three uh, letters um uh, are highly praised as Icha um Jnana and uh, sorry uh, as uh, Anuttara and Icha and Jnana Shakti and uh that's that's that but malani malani is of course different malani the alphabet of malani is not in the the regular order and uh abhinava gupta praised malani at the highest level as did swamiji's grandmaster swami ram who studied Ma- the uh, parachashika vivarana for 20 years and swamiji himself he held uh, malani uh krama as uh, as uh, very very uh just the essence the essence of abhinava gupta's uh, philosophy thank you I think, thank you so much i, I think uh, the uh, except the pratyahara vidhana uh, used in the maheshwara sutra as panini the order in which the uh, phonemes uh, actually have been ordered in the sutra has a longer an older history than panini uh, from the shiksha from the times of shiksha from the times pre panini and shiksha development times so the way that uh, shiksha time uh, 
uh, identification of uh, the process of uh, emergence of uh, phonemes, uh, both vowels and consonants, how it con gets connected to sadhana, uh, how it gets connected to Shabda Brahma sadhana and all that, that is actually the uh, addition that is done, done by the uh, uh, Trika scholars later. So that, that is from where you get these uh, Matrika and Malini systems. Uh, so the Matrika and Malini systems uh, are uh, Kashmir Shaiva Trika addition to a very older and longer existing phoneme ordering system that was existing right from the Shiksha time. Thank you, Nagraj Garu, for that uh, information.